What's up, Michael here, back with another Webflow tutorial. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a dynamic Webflow nav bar. Now, I do Webflow consulting a lot, and one thing that I see from people coming over from another tool like WordPress or Wix or something similar is they're sometimes used to, when they add a new page to their site, it automatically gets added to the nav bar. And if you have any experience in Webflow, you know that doesn't happen. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can dynamically update the links in your nav bar by just simply adding a new page to one of your collection lists. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Webflow, and before we get started building the nav bar, we actually have to make sure we have a collection um, set up that we want to use. So you can use any collection you want. I'm gonna create a new collection and call it services. So I'm gonna create the projects. I'm gonna use the projects as like a base point and I'm just gonna rename this. I'm gonna create a collection and let's add a few services. So I'm just gonna add the names for now. Um, we can make the first one web design. Second one, we can do, oh, let's see, local SEO. And then the third one, we can do consulting. So we have our three services set up, and let's go build the nav bar. So I'm just do, gonna do Command E or Control E if you're on Windows. I'm gonna type in nav bar. I'm gonna get Webflow's um, standard nav bar set up. Now I'm gonna edit it, edit it a little bit because I'm gonna swap out their container with a div. It's a little bit more flexible. So I'm just gonna click on nav bar, do command D again, drop in a div block, I'm gonna drag it above the container, and then I'm just gonna name it container. And then within the container, I'm gonna add two more divs, one for the left and one for the right. And then on the first div, I'm gonna call it nav underscore logo wrapper. And then on the next one, I'm gonna do nav underscore links wrapper. I'm just naming these real quick with something that makes sense. I'm gonna take this brand, this uh, brand link block, I'm gonna copy it and paste it in the logo wrapper. Then we're going to copy the nav menu and the nav or the menu button and paste those in the links wrapper. Then I'm just going to delete this container. And then with and then selected on my new container, I'm going to add a width 100%, max width of 900 pixels, and then I'm going to give it uh, auto margin on both sides to center it. I'm just doing this to set up my nav bar. If you have a specific way you like to set up your nav bar or you're fine with the default Webflow nav bar, you can just keep it the same. This just comes down to personal preference. Okay, so once you have that set up, well, I'm just gonna quick add a company name. All right. I'm gonna give the logo wrapper 30% wide. The links wrapper, 7% wide. And then I'm gonna to go to the container and flex. There we go. All right, so now once you have your nav bar set up the way you want it, you, can't, you want to then go to your nav menu. It's where it wraps the links. And we literally just wanna delete all the links that are inside here. Now, if you wanna combine certain links with your collection links, then feel free to keep links in there, but with the nav menu selected, I'm gonna do Command E again, and I'm gonna type in collection list, hit enter, and then I'm gonna double click to get the source. So I need services. I'm just gonna close out of that, and then selecting on one of these boxes, I'm gonna do Command E again, get a text link, drop that in there, and then under the link settings, I'm gonna go and for the link setting, I'm gonna link it to the current service, and then I'm gonna get the text from services, and I'm gonna get it from the name. Now you see we have the three links up here. They're kind of stacked a little odd, so we're gonna, in the navigator, go to collection list, and then we're gonna flex it. And then we're gonna make sure it is flexed horizontal. Then we're gonna go under collection item, and we're gonna add some left and right padding. 
That looks about good. And then I'm just going to get my container here and I'm going to add a bit of padding to make the nav bar a little bigger. So there we go. We got a completely dynamic nav bar right, really quickly. And to just show you that it's dynamic, I'm going to go to my collection list. I'm going to add another service. Let us do logo design. And then I'm going to hit create, go back. You're going to see it automatically popped up logo design. Now, the only downside of this, if you want to do this for your whole nav bar, is your whole all your nav links have to be templated pages in the CMS. However, say you want to combine a dynamic nav bar with a more static nav bar, so you can still have all your about pages, like some of those pages that may not be in a collection. And then you also want to link to link out to your services page and have those dynamically update. And you can easily do that. So let's quickly, uh, let's, let's keep our collection list. So I'm going to unflex it. I'm going to make it be vertical again. Actually, I'm going to keep it flexed. I'm going to flex it vertical and then centered. And I'll show you why in a little bit. On my collection item, I'm going to take away the left and right padding and give some vertical padding. Now, I am just going to copy this collection list wrapper and then I'm going to delete it. Don't copy anything else because we're going to need that. And then in, my, in the nav menu, I'm going to add in some nav links. So just text link. So this is our normal stuff. We have maybe about and with this selected I'm going to click in there again command E I'm going to add another text link because I can't copy and paste these right now and then I'm going to add let's see contact I'm going to give these a class of nav underscore link nav underscore link I'm going to give them some left and right padding and then what I want to do is I want to drop in a, um, a drop down. I'm going to get the nav menu. I'm just going to flex that to make it all um, even. Then under the drop down, I'm just going to give it nav underscore link, the class. Doesn't really matter. I'm not going to style this too much because that's not really the point of this video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to show it. And then under the drop down list over here in the navigator, I'm going to delete the drop down links. We're doing the same thing that we did in the nav menu to start. And I'm going to paste in my collection list. And if I show this, we have all our services right here. So if I go into preview, actually I'm going to quickly name this services real quick. Then if I go into preview, we have a normal nav bar, about, contact. These are static pages that you add manually. Then if someone goes under services, here's all your services I dynamically update. Say we no longer offer web design. I'm going to go in and delete web design. Delete, wasn't showing up for a little bit. All right, there we go, it's deleted. Now if I go preview the page, click under services, we no longer have web design. That is how you create a dynamic nav bar natively within Webflow. It is a bit more work than things like WordPress or Wix. However, it does work perfectly. Now, like I said, I wasn't doing design in this video. I was just showing you how to add the functionality. If you want me to show you how to design a full nav bar and make different parts of it dynamic like this, feel free to drop that in the comments below and I'll try to make that. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, feel free to hit the like button or subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, I'm a Webflow developer and a Webflow consultant. So if you do need help with that, feel free to check out the links in the description and I'd love to talk with you on the phone.